dangers, Dr. Danfield. As our story opens, we find Dr. Danfield cutting a clipping from the morning paper. What's so important about that story that it rates being clipped out? Well, here's what caught my attention, Rusty. Let me read it to you. Mrs. Fraser's strange phobia has become a legend in the neighborhood of Wolf's Head Bay. Her refusal to leave the home that she and her husband occupied for many years, coupled with the fact that neighbors report seeing a bobbing light and hearing strange sounds coming from nearby Murdoch's swamp, have lent credence to the theory that the swamp is haunted with the ghost of the vanished millionaire, Alec Fraser. Who ever dreamed up that old wives' tale? Oh, do you think it's an old wives' tale, Rusty? Of course I do. I suppose next we'll hear that the ghost of old man Frazier was seen walking through the village without a head on his shoulders. <laughs> It'd be an interesting spectacle, wouldn't it? Hey, now listen to this. It was reported today that Jay Barrington and company had purchased one of the pearls from the famous matched necklace owned by Mrs. Alec Frazier. It's believed that Mrs. Frazier is disposing of the gems to private buyers as well as to jewelry firms. Well, what do you think of that? Why should I think anything of it? If Mrs. Fraser wants to sell her pearls, let's let her. Oh, I doubt if we could stop her if we wanted to. So you don't see any connection between the two stories? Oh, no, of course I don't. Rusty, sometimes I worry about your imagination or your lack of it. Here, let me ask you some questions. Why do you think Mrs. Fraser is selling her pearls? Maybe she needs the money. But the pearls have been in the family for generations. Mr. Fraser was a millionaire. Yet, now that he's disappeared, his wife begins selling the pearls because she needs money. No, no, no. It doesn't add up. Well, that means the motive for murder wasn't money, doesn't it? Murder? <laughs> come, come, my dear. A man is never murdered until his body is found. How about his ghost? Don't forget the bobbing light in Murdoch's swamp. I'm coming to that. Now, since her husband's death, Mrs. Fraser has had a phobia about leaving the house. She's remained in it for six months. Why? She's afraid of the ghost. <laughs> Ghosts, my dear, according to legend, only appear at night. No, no, I think we'll find that there's much more to this than an old wives' tale, Rusty, or a backcountry legend. You think that we'll find? Dan, you don't mean that we're oh, going Oh, yes, to... my dear, that's exactly what I mean. We're leaving for Cape Cod tonight. Dan, you can't be serious. You've a lecture to deliver, and besides, what do we care about a crazy old lady who's decided to dispose of the family heirloom? We care a great deal, my dear. I haven't seen a ghost in years, and I've never met a person with a phobia against going out of doors. Now, I think if I can find the explanation for those two, uh, Mysteries. My lecture classes will benefit greatly. But, Dan, really... No arguments, my dear. If you prefer to remain here, you may. Oh, all right. But if you want to know, I think you're just using this as an excuse to stir up some excitement. Really? <laughs> Rusty, you do have an imagination after all, don't you? In a moment, we'll return for the second act of Danger, Dr. Dan Field. But first... Back to Michael Dunn for the second act of Danger, Dr. Dan. Well, we were certainly fortunate to be able to hire this automobile in the village, weren't we, Rusty? I challenge that. I also challenge whether the thing will hold together long enough to get us where we're going and back. Oh, I think it'll get us where we're going all right. I think that's the Fraser house there. That architectural monstrosity? Why, Dan, it looks like a mausoleum. It is rather bleak looking, to be sure. The place is the oldest structure in this vicinity. Well, at least they get a good view of the ocean. And that's all. I don't blame Mrs. Fraser for not wanting to leave the house. There's nothing but rocks and windswept scrubland. That must be Murdoch Swamp over there. Yes, yes, I imagine it is. Well, let's go up and present ourselves to Mrs. Fraser. Who are you going to tell her we are? suppose she won't even talk to us. In that event, my dear, we'll have to resort to artifice. Dan, look over there. The view of the ocean is lovely. I think if we spend less time admiring the ocean, Rusty, and more in concentrating on Murdoch's swamp, we'll be more apt to accomplish our purpose. Okay. Well, well, well. Our approach must have been observed. Behold the giant. Dan, did you ever see such a huge giant of a man? Who are you and what do you want? Well, is this the way you greet all prospective pearl buyers? You want to buy a pearl? Well, I don't know until I see some samples and learn the price. Is uh, Mrs. Fraser at home? Mrs. Fraser isn't seeing anyone. How much money you got? I prefer to do business with Mrs. Fraser. Mrs. Fraser doesn't see anyone, I said. Yes, 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 we heard you. Well, what's the next move? 
Let's see your money. Very well. There. Does that satisfy you? Dan, where'd you get that? Rusty, where did I get it? You surprised me. You cashed the check for that last article I sold. Oh. You are a writer. What difference does it make? Came here to buy one of the Fraser Pearls. You've demanded that I show you my money. I've done so. Now, do we do business or don't we? Yeah. Come in. Well, that's better. One would think we came here to steal the pearls rather Wait than... Wait here. Well, how do you like that? Cordial, isn't he? What a gloomy old place. Dan, I don't like this. What don't you like about it? Well, I'm not sure. It's so sort of eerie, and that giant... The giant's name is Sid. He was retained by Alec Fraser when an attempt was made to steal Mrs. Fraser's pearls several years ago. Here he comes back. Yes. There's the pearl. It cost you $5,000. Oh, just a minute. Not so fast. I don't intend to buy a pig and a poke, you know. Let me see it. Okay, take a look. Only don't touch it. Trusting so, aren't you? Now, let me see here. Dan, it's beautiful. Yes, yes, it is, Rusty. But uh, I'd like to see the others, please. This is the only one that's for sale. Do you want it or don't you? The only one? But I thought the entire necklace... This was... is the only one that's for sale. If you want it, give me your $5,000. Well, I can't understand why... Won't you... Throw the gentleman another pearl. Now, now, Mrs. Fraser, you don't Show have... him to... another pearl, Sid. Oh, all right, only you told I'm me. sorry that Sid was so brusque. He's only that way because I instructed him to be. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm Mrs. Fraser. Mrs. Fraser? But you're... You can't be. Why? Because you expected to find a dried-up old hag and found me instead. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. We've been told that you were different. Don't worry, I understand. Now, who are you, please? Well, I'm Dr. Dan Danfield, Mrs. Fraser, and this is my secretary, Rusty Fairfax. Dr. Danfield, of course. I've heard of you. Did you come here to buy a pearl, Dr. Danfield, or to ask me questions about my strange phobia? Frankly, Mrs. Fraser, both. Studying phobias is my business. I've never encountered one such as yours. Sit down, Dr. Danfield. And you, Miss Fairfax. I'd like to talk about it. This is the first opportunity I've had to discuss the matter with someone who might understand. Oh, thank you. Do you live here alone with Sid, Mrs. Fraser? Oh, no. No, there are other servants. But I depend upon Sid the most. Now then, uh, what was it you wanted to ask me, Dr. Danfield? Uh, about this fear you have, Mrs. Fraser. What do you think will happen if you leave the house? First... I must tell you about the manner in which my husband disappeared. Oh, please do. It was six months ago. We were having a party here at the manor house. Alec and I stepped out onto the porch for a moment. Fog was lifting off the ocean. Crept toward the house like a great gray blanket. It had almost reached the edge of the porch when we heard the voice. The voice? Yes. Came up over the cliff through the fog, a sort of... Low, moaning wail. What was it saying? We couldn't make out at first. And then Alec heard his name. I thought he did. He stepped down off the porch and walked into the fog. I stood there, petrified, waiting. But Alec didn't return. So, uh, what did you do? I ran to the house and got some of our friends. Naturally, I was afraid Alec had fallen over the cliff. We ran down the stairs that Alec had had built in the rock face of the cliff, expecting to find him dead at the bottom. Uh-huh. But you uh, found no trace of him? No. We got men from the village and searched all the remainder of that night and most of the next day, but nothing at all was discovered. That's strange. Very strange. Now, tell me, Mrs. Frazier, do you honestly believe you heard a voice calling Alec's name? I don't know. Could have been the wind, I suppose. It sounded like a voice. Uh -huh. And now you're afraid to leave the house because you think the voice might call you. You don't believe me, do you, Dr. Danfield? You think I'm neurotic or perhaps a little mad? Oh, no, 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 no. Not, not at all. You've, you've had a terrible experience. Was well, terrible. It haunts me. I've become afraid of the fog. I'm afraid to go out. I'm afraid the fog will surround me as it did Alec and... And I, too, will disappear. Well, that's quite understandable. Now, I suppose you want to ask why I'm selling the necklace. Well, yes. I was wearing the necklace on that night. It was Alex and my anniversary, you know. Tell me, do you attach some significance with the necklace and your husband's disappearance? Yes, I, I don't know why. The pearls have been a burden ever since I inherited them from Alex's mother. 
There was always the fear that they might be stolen. The relief to have them gone. Oh, I see. And now about the dancing light that people have seen in the swamp beyond the house. <laughs> I'm afraid you'll have to take that up for the natives, Dr. Danfield. I'm sure the dancing light is a product of their imagination. I knew it was an old wives' tale. Well, we'd better be going, Rusty. Thank you for the time and information you've given us, Mrs. Fraser. It's been most enlightening. I hope you're not too disappointed. No, not at all, not at all. As a matter of fact, I shall incorporate the things you've told me in my next lecture. I'm sure it'll prove to be the most interesting experience I've presented in months. Good day, Mrs. Fraser. Good day. Come along, Rusty. <laughs> Well, do you think you got away with it? Got away with what, Rusty? With convincing Mrs. Frazier that you believed those stories she told you. Oh, didn't you believe them? <laughs> of course not. And neither did you. Afraid of the fog. Selling the pearls for sentimental reasons. <laughs> Nuts. Strange, isn't it? She's afraid of something. I wonder what it can be. Well, whatever it is, it's outside the house. And it isn't fog. And if she really wants to get rid of the pearls, why doesn't she sell the string intact? There are dozens of collectors who would pay a fabulous price to possess the famous Fraser necklace. Maybe she thinks she'd make more money selling them piecemeal. No, 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 no. That's not the answer. She's selling those pearls one at a time for a reason. And the more I think about it, the more mystified I become. I don't like to think about it. There's something plenty wrong with this whole deal. Yes, I believe there is, Rusty. What is Mrs. Fraser afraid of outside the house? Why is she selling the pearls one by one? Well, maybe we'll find the answer in Murdoch's swamp. In the swamp? Don't tell me that now you believe that story about the dancing light. Oh, yes, Rusty. I believe every word of it. As a matter of fact, Rusty, tonight you and I are going down to the swamp and try to learn the connection between the dancing light and Mrs. Fraser's strange phobia. <laughs> In a moment, we return for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... Now back to Michael Dunn for the third act of... Danger, Dr. Danfield. the car here and walk the rest of the way. Dan, do we have to go down into the swamp? No, you don't, Rusty. As a matter of fact, I'd feel easier if you stayed here in the car. Me? Stay here alone? <laughs> not on your life. I'm not letting you out of my sight. <laughs> All right, Rusty. Here, wait till I check everything, huh? See, flashlight, revolver. Revolver? What do you want a revolver for? Just in case we need a ghost. Come on. Sometimes I think I'm crazy working for you, Dan Danfield. Oh, really? I thought you liked it. Did you? Yes. Well, I do. <laughs> Thank you, Rusty. Yeah, that black patch beyond the open field is Murdoch's swamp. I wish it weren't quite so dark. Everything looks like a black patch to me. Cheerful now. We'll cut across the field and wait at the edge of the swamp until we see the dancing light. Come on, let's go. You really think we'll see a dancing light? Oh, yes, yes, yes. If not tonight, then some other night. Some other night? You mean... Oh, oh. What's the matter? Nothing. I just stubbed my toe. If you'd use that flashlight you brought along. Sorry, Rusty. We'll use the light only in an emergency. Dan, listen. Yes, yes, I hear it. It's a howling dog. Well, it adds atmosphere, doesn't it? I, I say it does. It also adds goose pimples. A howling dog seems to come from over near that lone pine. I thought dogs only howled at the moon. On the contrary, my dear, they howl at a lot of things. Dan, that was a shot. It certainly was, and apparently it was directed at the dog. Well, things are beginning to happen, aren't they? Why would anyone want to shoot a poor dog? Well, perhaps the dog found something, Rusty. See, look there. I, I see it. It's the dancing light. Yes, that's the light, all right. Yeah, it's gone. No, no, no. There it is again, dancing just above the swamp grass. Come on. Where are we going? We've got to find out what that light is. What? Do, do, do we really care? Wouldn't it be better to go back to the hotel and Stop guess? Your oh, oh, Dan! Rusty, Rusty, where are you? Down here, Dan. Help me. I fell into a hole that's filled with water. Yeah, you fell into the swamp. Here. Wait a minute. Uh, there. Now, can you reach my hand? No. no well, what? Dan, there's someone coming. Look out. What the? Behind you. Why, you ain't a man when he's down, will you? Let me up. I out. Oh. 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 Dan. Oh. Dan, speak to me. Oh, Dan. Oh, what happened? 
Oh, Dan, thank heaven you're all right. All right. I feel as though I've been run over by a steamroller. Well, you were practically. Whoever it was kept beating and kicking you even after you were out. Oh, it was terrible. Uh, tell me, how many did you see who it was? No, it was pitch dark, and I was in that water hole. Oh, uh, how'd you get out, by the way? Oh, it was the worst experience I've ever had. I kept slipping back, and, and finally I caught hold of a shrub. Well, anyway, you're out. That's the important thing. Now, where's the flashlight? Oh, here it is. Well, let's, uh, let's have a look around. What are you looking for? Footprints, Rusty. We can make an impression of footprints. Dan, look. Why, George, a, a pearl half buried in the mud. It could be one of Mrs. Frazier's. It not only could, but it is, Rusty. I'm sure of it. What do you suppose it's doing here in the swamp? I know. Someone stole one of the pearls and was trying to escape through the swamp. He thought we were after him. Oh. Oh. It's Sid, Mrs. Frazier's handyman. I suppose he's looking for us. But who else? Oh! Dr. Danville! Over this way, Sid! Who wave your light, Dan? Yes, there he comes. This way, Sid, over here! Huh. There you are, Doc. What are you two doing down here in the swamp? Well, we weren't picking cranberries, you can be sure of that. Don't try to be funny, Doc. What are you pulling around here for? We were looking for a ghost, if you want to know. And uh, since this seems to be a question and answer period, Sid, tell me, how did you know we were down here in the swamp? What do you mean, how did I know? Well, while you were still away off there in the bushes somewhere, you called my name. Why did you think it was Miss Fairfax and I? Who else could it be? We heard the girl scream. Looking for more phobias, were you, Doc? And uh, fond ones, Sid. Come on, Rusty, let's get back to town. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mrs. Fraser said to bring you back to the house. She thought you might be hurt. Our uh, compliments to Mrs. Fraser, Sid, but tell her we have an important engagement in the village with a constable. <laughs> No, young fella. Sounds pretty far-fetched to me. Oh, does it, Constable? How would it sound to you if I produced the murdered body of Alec Frazier? I don't believe you can do it. And you want to bet? Nope. I ain't a bet man. i tell you what I will do, though. Mm, what's that? You show me Frazier's murdered body, and I'll arrest the man who murdered him. <laughs> well, that's mighty wide of you, Constable. Tell me, uh, how are you going to tell who murdered him? <laughs> I never thought of that. Bet's off. <laughs> All right, Constable, I'll, I'll make a deal with you. I'll not only produce Frazier's body, but I'll produce his murderer and prove his guilt. It's a deal. What do you want me to do? You just meet me and Miss Fairfax at the south edge of Murdoch Swamp tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. No, no, no. Deal's off. Swamp's haunted. I wouldn't go in there for a hundred dead men. Well, you won't have to. All you have to do is sit on the edge of the swamp with your squirrel gun or whatever kind of weapon you carry, and I'll go bring out Frazier's body. It's a deal. Have a glass of cider? Well, I prefer bonded bourbon, but if you... How's that? I said, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks very much. There's uh, nothing like a glass of cider to steady a man's nerves when he's about to dig up a six-month-old corpse. Well, here's, uh, here's to you, Constable. Uh, never mind that stuff. Let's drink. Ben, are you sure the Constable will be here? Mm -hmm. From what you told me, he didn't sound very brave. Well, I think the constable's much braver than we give him credit for, Rusty. Here, let me get my shovel. Yes, there's the constable sitting over under the tree. Holy smoke. Is he a policeman? I thought the characters who looked like him only lived in the comic strips. Well, looks are sometimes deceiving. Oh, hello there, constable. Uh, hi there, young feller. You thought I wouldn't show up, didn't you? <laughs> hey, who's that you got with you? Well, it's... Hey, <laughs> pretty, ain't she? <laughs> hey, Jay, I just thought of something. Hey, you got a gun? Why, yes, Constable. As a matter of fact, Good, always... good, good. I'm going to make you a deputy. Raise your right hand. But look here, I... Uh, I... Raise your right hand, Sid. <laughs> well, all right. That's it, that's it. Uh, show me where he's going to... He's going to make you a deputy. There, now, now you're a deputy. Okay. Hey, if you want to shoot anybody, you can. Uh, go on, I'll get out of here. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> all right, Constable. <laughs> we'll be back inside of an hour. Come on, Rusty. <laughs> Oh, Dan, I think he's wonderful. Why, well, because he said you were uh, pretty? Uh, that had nothing to do with it. <laughs> had nothing to do with it. Okay, Rusty. Yeah, I think he's all right, too. Uh, careful now, this swamp ground is treacherous even in daylight. It's nowhere near as forbidding, though. Every time I think of last night, I get a fresh crop of goose pimples. Hey, wait a minute. Yes, there it is. There's what? A lone pine tree we spotted last night when we heard the howling dog. Dan, you don't think the dog was howling because he'd found Alec Frazier's dead body. That's what I'm basing my theory on, Rusty. Well, by 
George, look. Dan, it's the dog. Yes, yeah, shot through the head. I see now. The surrounding brush is so thick, a shot must have been fired at close range. If we could find the empty cartridge and then find the gun from which it was fired. I don't think we'll have to go to that much trouble, Rusty. Come on, let's look around here a bit. Even after six months, there'll still be signs of trouble. Dan, look over there. Oh, by George, Rusty, you found it. Dan, is it, is it a grave? If it isn't, I'm going to be very disappointed. Here, let me get my shovel into action. Dan, it will be awful if there's a man under that mud. Don't be serious, Rusty. This is all in day's work. Well. What's the matter? Well, I, I, I hit something, I think. Oh, Dan, I can't look. Yes, there's something here, all right. Dan, I don't like this. Hey, Rusty, look. I can't, Dan. Yes, it's a man's hand. Do you oh. see what's clutched in his fingers? Well, they're pearls, three of them. Yes, and that answers all of the questions. Dan, listen. Yes, I heard it. Ow! Well, it sounds as though there's a small-sized bat going on off there. Dan, you don't think that the... Perhaps the... the uh, what were you going to say, Rusty? Well, you don't think that the constable is in trouble. That's exactly what I do think, Rusty. We've got to help him. Come on. Those shots came from over that way. I thought you said the constable was afraid to come into the swamp. No, 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 no. He said it. No, I know he was kidding. Say, look out. Oh, don't worry about me. A little water won't hurt. No, you didn't feel that way. It's behind that tree. Dan, it's Sid. Yes, yes, and he's got a beat on the, on the constable. We've got to do something. I intend to. Stay here, Rusty. All right, Sid, drop it. Why, you? Okay, if that's the way you want it, take this. <coughs> you squirt. <coughs> but he was one right on the butt. <coughs> Dan! Dan! Are you all right? Yes. No, I wouldn't have been if I, if I hadn't got in a lucky punch, Rusty. Look, look, Dan. Here comes the constable. Yes, yes. Constable! Constable, this way. Uh, hi there, young fellow. You thought I was scared to come into the swamp, didn't you? Yeah. And so did Sid Edmonds. Yeah. Bet he thinks different now. Yes, I imagine he does. Huh. That's him on the ground, huh? I must have winged him. Yes, you uh, must have. Well, his shooting days are over now. <sighs> hey, 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 what's happened to that pretty girl you had with you? Rusty, while well, she's right here. Rusty. Why, well, she's fainted. <laughs> In a moment, we return for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... Now for the conclusion of... Danger, Dr. Danfield. Well, Constable, the least Mr. Fairfax and I can say is that we're grateful to you for saving our lives. I'll say we are. If it hadn't been for you, we'd both be dead. <laughs> eh, pretty, ain't she? <laughs> eh, nice construction job, too. Constable. <laughs> eh? Eh, something wrong, young fella? As, uh, as I was saying, Constable, why was it you didn't investigate the dancing for today? Scared, that's why. Couldn't figure it out. Us country folks don't like them things. Tell him the explanation of it, Dan. Yeah, yeah, tell me, young feller. <laughs> yeah, pretty interesting. I'll be glad to explain, Constable, <laughs> if you'll uh, keep your mind on the subject. You see, Sid and Mrs. Frazier murdered Alec Frazier the night of the party six months ago. Probably their motive was love. Is that a fact? Yes. Mrs. Frazier lured her husband into the swamp where he was attacked by Sid. Now, in the struggle that ensued... Alec grasped the pearl necklace and tore it from his wife's throat. Well, do tell. Do tell. Most of the pearls fell to the ground, although three of them remained in the grasp of Alec, unnoticed in the excitement of the moment by Sid and Mrs. Fraser, you see. Then it probably wasn't until she got back to the house that Miss Fraser realized her necklace had been ruined. That's right, Rusty. Immediately, she knew that she'd have to find the pearls that had been lost. Because if anyone else found them, they'd realize that she'd been in the swamp and become suspicious. So that accounts for the dancing light. Mm -hmm. It was a flashlight held by either Sid or Mrs. Fraser while they hunted for the pearls. That's right. The light served a double purpose. It frightened the natives away, and Mrs. Fraser was able to recover most of her pearls. But why did she dream up that story about being afraid to leave the house? And uh, why was she selling the pearls one by one? Mrs. Fraser, my dear, was a very clever woman. If she could convince people that she was afraid to leave the house, no one would suspect it was she in the swamp. Also, no one would have the opportunity to wonder why she never wore the necklace, you But see. selling the pearls one at a time... Well, sooner or later, Mrs. Fraser would be forced to produce the necklace when it came time to renew the insurance on it, for example. So she had to get rid of those pearls in a manner that seemed normal. And since she couldn't offer the entire necklace, 
She sold the gems one at a time. Yes, that's right. Now, by selling them to different people, no one could possibly know that the necklace wasn't complete. That explains everything. But we still owe the constable a great debt. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, what was that? Oh, Miss Fairfax was just saying we'd like to have you spend a few days with us in New York, Constable. Say, um, how about coming down next Tuesday? Nope, nope. Deal's off. Tuesday, I just go to the voting. Voting? Voting? Why, sure. Uh, don't you know that Tuesday's voting day? <laughs> Doggone it, you forgot you're an American? You forgot you got the right to go and vote for the things you want? Uh, you forgot it's your duty to do that? Yeah, he's right, Rusty. We should have remembered you're that. You're darn tootin' them right. Why, if you ain't satisfied with the way things is, go to change them. You won't get them changed no other way. Gosh, Dan, that's true, isn't it? Yes. That's the trouble, you folks, you don't think. You got the right to think and to say what you please and to vote for the things you want, and you forget about it. By golly, I, I wonder how you'd feel if you didn't have that rights. Well, if you don't get out and vote, maybe you find out. Well, Constable, you're 100% right. Tuesday is voting day, and Rusty and I will be the first of the polls, eh, Rusty? You bet we will. Well, that's better. <laughs> Pretty, ain't she? <laughs> Pretty enough to vote, Constable. <laughs> well, so long. See you at the voting. <laughs>